And welcome back to Weekend Edition. This is Rehash, where we recap the big stories of the week. And I'm going to go ahead and start it off. It was, I thought I was having a quiet weekend. I think I jinxed myself. A murder investigation, a homicide specifically, a homicide investigation was launched on Thursday after a 46-year-old man died on Wednesday. And the autopsy said he died of a single blow to the head from a baseball bat. And so I went to the site on Thursday, and it was pretty, pretty... I don't know what the word I should use is. Strange. It was a. Uh, it was an. I felt really uncomfortable at the scene. You know, a lot of people looking. It was a very crowded apartments. Uh, it was broad daylight too, and a lot of kids were coming out of school, and they're all watching us with our cameras. But no arrests have been made yet. The man has been identified as 46-year-old Henry Ropon. He's a tricky man. He was beat to death with a bat, and so no arrests were made as of Friday. So Ken, not as good news, I guess. Well, it depends on who you ask, right? Uh, well, um, I talked about it last week, but again, discussion continued this week on the proposal to repeal salary increases for elected officials and political appointees. Well, for this week started with the Mayor's Council of Guam. Uh, they are included in the Bill 204 by Senator Michael Sinclair to repeal their salary increases. And during the Mayor's Council of Guam meeting, uh, Sinahania Mayor Robert Hoffman, he um, they didn't hold back. He said uh, the senators who introduced this bill should be ashamed for introducing such a measure that would repeal their raises because I think it's been about like 15 or so years since uh, mayors have received any increase. And he noted that mayors are required to do like 40 things and they actually go above and beyond that doing 90 or even more. So um, so they, they're, they're putting together a survey on their feedback and they hope to present it during next week's public hearing on November 10th on the bill. And then just keeping with uh, the discussion on cuts, uh, Senator Brian McCready, who introduced the first bill, 201, to repeal senator salary increases, he introduced another bill this week to um, uh, put a referendum before the voters on whether they feel uh, senators should work on a part-time basis, so basically a part-time legislature. And this would require senators to work uh, no more than 60 hours per pay period and get paid $35,000 per year. Currently, they get paid 85000 so it's a big decrease. And I know that the discussion on part-time legislatures has been um, discussed for years. And I know Speaker Wampat, uh, later uh, on Friday, she said that um, it puts a lot of stuff at risk, like the checks and balances and the kind of people who decide to run for senators. So uh, it should be an interesting week next week again, so we'll probably still be t discussing with this. So deja vu, right? Yeah. <laughs> so Issa, we had uh, very important people here for DOE. Yeah, so we had a visit from U.S. DOE officials. Uh, it's part of their annual visits to check on Guam's progress on getting off of high-risk status. So we've been on high-risk status for over a decade, and although we all know that DOE isn't perfect, you know, we report on it all the time, good and bad stories with DOE, but when they spoke with the legislature this week, they did know that there has been significant progress in recent years. And so although we're not at the transition phase yet, we're working towards that, and we're actually almost there with some of the seven major initiatives that um, they've identified. So um, also with DOE this week was a big, you know, vote, supposed to be a big vote for either to renew or not renew Superintendent John Fernandez's contract. Also, you know, Superintendent John Fernandez is popular with some people, not popular with other people, but we can't deny that there has been a lot of progress made um, for his contract renewal. He received letters of support from the governor, from the former Guam Education Board chair, uh, the legislature, a lot of different people, but they voted to delay his uh, a decision on his renewal until December 16. So we'll see how that goes. We did do a survey on KOAM.com where uh, we asked voters, our viewers, if they sh thought he should be renewed or not. And it was surprising that he had 91% say they thought he should be renewed. So we'll see how that goes later on this year. And uh, speaking, I guess, of public opinion, Nestor, we talked, uh, you, you interviewed with the, uh, the AG. Yeah, um, so yeah, we, we talked with the Attorney General, Elizabeth Baird Anderson, and um, she came out with a letter, um, both her, uh, signed by both her and the CNMI Attorney General, Ed Manabusen, and it had to do with um, United Airlines and uh, the service, specifically the service between uh, Guam and Honolulu, which um, uh, they're, they're saying that um, they've uh, gotten a lot of complaints or there uh, have been chronic complaints over the years about this particular route. Uh, in particular, in the five years since um, the merger with Continental Airlines, um, there's been a great uh, degradation in service, um, the loss of um, free food, uh, 
free um, baggage and uh, free entertainment and also the fact that um, the Tokyo to Honolulu flight which is about the same distance as the Guam to Honolulu flight is about half the price so um, actually what the catalyst was was they received a letter I think most um, one pass or members received a letter from the new CEO of, of United um, stating that you know he wanted to make improvements so they saw this as an opportunity to raise these issues and so they wrote a letter to um, the United corporate office and uh, that's the sort of thing that they um, laid out for the office and they're hoping for a response and they want to see if they can establish a dialogue and um, see the, if um, United will make some improvements. So. so Guam and CNMI want friendlier skies back. <laughs> That's yes. their slogan, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, for you at home, if you have any stories you'd like us to cover, you can Facebook message us or you can email us at reporters at KUAM.com. More when Weekend Edition returns.